Hey everyone, CZ Fangirl here, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to reassemble the sear cage assembly. I'm sure people find this as uh, frustrating as I initially did until I figured out some cool little tools to make that make your life a lot easier. So this is uh, my Ceramajig and as you can see that uh, it's got the same sort of profile as the sear assembly here or the ejector has and this is a jet set fixture and compound picked that up from Rio Grande and it's a uh, pelleted polymer plastic and you heat it up in water I think 170 degrees Fahrenheit until it's softened create a blob and then press whatever part you want to work on into it let it cool and then your parts not going anywhere so in the jewelry biz we use this for setting gemstones and rings and things like that so uh, this works like a clamp would instead of uh, using um, like a, a, a wooden ring clamp this holds more securely and it's also non marring which is important so anyways I'm gonna take this apart really quick like and um, I'll show you how it's done so two tools besides my ceramajig that I absolutely swear by and you can see the the there are these little let's see if I can zoom right in there so there you go you can see the impression of the spring right there so that's what the spring when you're reinstalling it will cradle into it'll snap into those little grooves there and then it doesn't drop out the bottom because that's you know where the spring is usually the most frustrating is you get it all lined up in there you try and push the the sear pin through and then the spring moves and falls out the bottom and you've captured nothing so anyways this is uh tool number one absolutely imperative the next one is a awl so it has a very sharp point and then it flares out wider and wider and this is a sewing awl or leather workers use these as well so this is a super good tool to use and what it's used with is a slave pin and it's a hollow slave pin so that means that um, when I am trying to push this pin through I can use the awl to actually direct it around a bit better I've found that you know pushing it through I'm going to show you that I'm, I'm using the awl initially to capture the sear spring but um, the tip is so narrow that sometimes the pins uh, will fall off of it and then you end up uh, losing all the parts and they you know the sear spring still flies out the bottom so I'm just going to push this all apart so this is your sear pin the retaining pin this is your sear right here this part here f moves and it contacts your safety so it has a bearing surface that you'll want to polish there and this is completely unpolished now I still have to do the polishing but that's for another day what I want to do is basically just uh, do a demonstration video on how this is done so just pushing through the pin the pin is not staked taking the pin out take the roll pin or the um, slave pin out and then you can take your your sear spring falls out the bottom as usual and this is a competition sear spring I've not found a competition sear spring anywhere else except for Ipsic store and Ipsic store actually sells a complete uh, competition package for the shadow too which includes the competition sear spring it includes the competition disconnector the competition trigger spring the competition mainspring recoil spring reduced power firing pin spring and the competition um, 
extended firing pin uh, for 65 oh and a, a trigger pin but I would uh, just ignore the trigger pin and put in a floating trigger pin instead but uh, oh and all the pins that you need for reassembling your disconnector to your hammer and to your um, yeah for your hammer so uh, I would just ignore the trigger pin that's included and buy yourself a floating trigger pin for that. And the price on that is 65 euros, which in today's prices is uh, about 110 Canadian, which is a really, really good deal when you consider that a disconnector is already running upwards of about $70. So uh, good deal, a really good deal. So okay let's start the reassembly process so you've got your sear cage ejector legs pointing forward this is this uh the lobe that uh or the little leg that contacts the safety and that goes in there like that and then that flat part rides on the front so while i have it in that position I like to use my slave pin and then preemptively pin it all together. And then I don't have to worry about it all falling apart when I put it into my ceramajig. So in it goes into the ceramajig, press it in. You can see it's not going anywhere. Push out my retaining pin and this is why I like the um, awl is I can get a good you know contact onto the onto the slave pin and the way I built this jig is that I made sure that all these access points are accessible so out comes the slave pin and then I'm going to drop this in here and I'll just zoom in a bit. Get some focus. Sorry, I'm on this one of these goosenecky kind of things. So I've got a clear way through there. And The long leg of the sear spring goes into that notch there. And then the short leg rests up against in here and that creates the spring tension. So dropping it in and you can see that the short leg is sticking up here. Right there. and the long leg is fitting in the groove now this is where if you don't have one of these you'd be like losing your mind trying to keep that uh, that spring from falling out the bottom so then what I can do now is take my awl and because I said it has the sharp point at the front it has a tendency to, to be able to capture even if there's just a tiny little bit of spring visible I'm not going to be able to turn this sideways because the spring will fall out but um, if there's only a, a tiny portion of the uh, opening of the spring visible it will be able to capture that so in you go with your all and poke it through and now you can see that your spring is fully captured there's the short leg there's the long leg now I can either take this, this is a sear pin, and push it through. I don't like using it because it's wider and you have to be more precise in how you're, uh, you've got everything lined up. So I like using the roll pin and the roll pin fits into the awl very nicely and then I can just push it right through. So now everything is captured by the slave pin. And there you can see the long leg of the sear spring and that contacts the safety. 
and prevents uh, your safety from falling out too. And now finally, you can take your uh, sear pin and push your roll pin out. And basically what I do is I just wiggle it through there I'm going to have to actually drop down and have a look at this because I can't really see anything on camera if I'm lined up or not. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I just had to turn it a little bit to get it through there. And this is the part where you need to wiggle it a bit. So I'm just going to take that out because everything is cap. I'm just going to take that off there because everything is captured, but it's still hanging up a little bit inside there on the one, one end. So then you just wiggle and in it goes. So easy, super, super easy. This is as easy as probably you're replacing a trigger spring <laughs> with one of these honestly the first time I did this I lost my mind like literally I lost my mind I had no I would and panicking because I thought what if I can't get this reassembled um, but then I just reverted back to my uh, other life and uh, used some jewelry techniques and came up with this so this is a, yeah a brain saver and a sanity saver. So uh, pick yourself up some jet set fixturing compound. If you uh, can't get it, Fimo makes uh, a, a sort of an elephant gray colored um, plasticine kind of a compound. And that might work pretty good too. It's just, it's going to be sticky. Uh, this stuff is not sticky. So um, I would just go out and buy a, a little bit of the Jet Set Fixturing Compound uh, from RioGrande.com. And uh, yeah. And you can use this over and over again. If you um, end up wearing it out, which I doubt it, uh, just heat it back up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit till it softens, becomes a round blob. Flatten it out a bit, press your part in, and you're good to go again. And if you want to use it for something else, just, you know, re reuse it. But uh, they give you enough jet set fixturing compound that you'll be able to make a, probably as many parts as you need to for uh, helping you with your gunsmithing. So, And it's, like I said, a nice, nice tight fit. You can also uh, keep the sides flat which is what I've done, and I can actually put this in a vise if I need both hands to work on a tool or on a part. Do I even have the, yeah, I've got that in the right way. So if you need to have both hands free, um, plop it into a vise, and then you can use both your hands. Oh my gosh. Anyways, <laughs> CZ Fangirl out.